And Fox 2's Jessica Dupnack is joining us live now with their story. Jessica. We heard from 29 victims in those victim impact statements earlier in court today, and there was really one common thread among them, and that is just talking about what life is like for them. Uh, many of them said they're in survival mode, often triggered by their surroundings, a pain that two years later they're still feeling every single day. Now this week we sat down with one of those moms, Megan Gregory. Her son Keegan was in the bathroom when Justin Schilling was murdered. He was able to escape. Megan talked to us about what their life has been like in the anxiety surrounding this sentencing. How often do you think about that day, Megan? I fall asleep thinking about it every night. I picture what they went through in the bathroom, and that's how I fall asleep every single night. Do you think it'll always be that way for you? I hope not. It's been this way for more than two years for Megan Gregory and her family. Then 15 year old Keegan Gregory was in the bathroom at Oxford High School with 17 year old Justin Schilling when he was murdered. The boys hiding in stalls, Keegan able to send the following text messages to his mom. Help, gunshots, I'm hiding in the bathroom. Oh my God, help mom. Minutes later, the shooter killed Justin in front of Keegan, then ordered Keegan up against the wall. He apparently recalls having two options, stay and be killed or run. He ran and lived. It was and always will be the most terrifying moment of my life. Being cornered with no option but to run out of the bathroom as fast as I could, hoping to live. Even after leaving the bathroom, I could see bodies on the floor, blood everywhere and knew that some of my peers were now gone. Megan, sitting alongside attorney Ben Johnson, representing dozens of Oxford families in the ongoing civil suit. The focus this week is the convicted killer facing his punishment and dozens of victim impact statements, including Keegan's. The second time, he has to be in the same room as the shooter. As much as I want this to give all of us closure, it will give us a sense, I think, of some relief, but I truly feel like we're not going to have relief until we know the entire truth of what happened that day. Megan is referring to the recent independent report by Guidepost Solutions of the now proven failures that the district did not provide a safe environment for students. And the blame is aimed at the superintendent, his cabinet and the school board. The report bubbling up even more questions, hindering closure for this family. I want all of my kids to just be able to live a normal life. No, this has ripped so much away from every single one of them. The Gregory family recently moved to Florida, haunted by the memories of Oxford, but they follow them. Megan says all of her kids inspected bathrooms at their new schools before they even agree to go. His new school, they have just single bathrooms. So, and there's not very many of them, but it's like in your home where you walk in and there's your bathroom and you can lock the door. And that was one thing that he said, he feels safe. Keegan is a senior next year. Mom says his innocence was robbed, but he's gained a wisdom even she learns from and leans on. Is forgiveness on the table? No. I want to be able to forgive, mm -hmm. but sitting in court and watching him with no remorse and the smirk on his face when my kid was saying how terrified he was, I can't, I'm not there. Maybe someday, but not, not right now. And that is accurate. The shooter with his head down uh, all day today in court. Very little reaction. Now we are live outside of the Oakland County Jail where the shooter was taken after sentencing. He will remain here until he is processed through MDOC. Then he will be transferred to the Thumb Correctional Facility in Lapeer. Within the next week or so, he'll be staying there because of his age. We will continue to monitor. Reporting live in Pontiac, Jessica Dupnack. Fox 2 News. And of course, Jessica, we saw that mom sitting next to Ven Johnson, the attorney who is taking on many of these civil cases. Much more to come as we move forward. Absolutely. And we talked about it earlier, Amy. You know, you have the civil suits. You also have accountability issues with the school board in Oxford. And of course, uh, James and Jennifer Crumbly, their hearings uh, coming up in the next couple of months. So again, it, it's two years, more than two years, but still a long way to go, a lifetime to go for these families. Absolutely. Well, hopefully they have a little bit of closure today and they are certainly in our hearts. Thank you, Jessica Dupnack. As always, we appreciate you.